Okay, we are diving right into chapter six, which is going to talk about work and energy. Um, ideas that we should have kind of a rough idea about, but let's see if we can get a little more precise. So previously in physics, uh, we discovered that if we had a box of stuff and we push it, it would accelerate. The longer you accelerate it, both in terms of distance or time, the faster it goes. Hopefully is not coming as a shock to anybody after, you know, months of this stuff. Um, so it seems kind of like there's some sort of relationship between how hard we push something, how far we push something, and how fast it goes. You know, the harder we push it, given everything else the same, the faster it goes. The longer we push it, the further we push it, holding everything else the same, the faster it goes. So that's it's interesting. There's some kind of relationship between exerting a force and causing something to go fast. Uh, we can look, we've seen maybe a couple other things that cause something to move. We can have something that starts at some height and then drops, or something that is pulled back um, in some kind of elastic band and then released. So, in both of these cases, there's still some force being exerted, but then, you know, I can lift something up, hold it at some height, my interesting like dog face hand i don't i don't know what's going on with that anyway you know i lift it up i exert some force to raise it and then i let it go and then it appears that something we might think gravity perhaps um causes it to speed up on the way down same idea i can pull back this elastic band with my like that kind of looks like a deer maybe moose antlers i don't know anyway my moose hand, um, again exerting a force to pull this thing back. I can let my hand go, and now something stored in the rubber band, kind of, again, maybe a force, causes this ball to go launching off into space. So now we're going to say that all these systems, you know, the ball that's being held up, the elastic that's been stretched, the balls that are flying off into space, are all characterized by having energy. And it's going to be tougher to get a more precise definition of energy than that, so let's try to break down energy by uh, how we see it, you know, how we can tell there's energy in a system. So we're going to look at three major types of energy to start. Kinetic energy, we're going to uh, use a K to represent. Gravitational potential energy, which will be UG. And elastic potential energy, which will be US, because usually we're talking about springs when we talk about elastic. So kinetic energy. It's energy that's due to an object's movement inside of our system. Gravitational potential due to an object's elevation inside of our system. Um, and elastic potential due to an object stretching, or the stretching of some object inside of our system. In addition to this, we get two other things that we want to talk about. Work and internal energy. So work is some process that results in a system's energy changing. So if we go back and look at these things, right? I push the box of stuff and I cause it to speed up, gaining kinetic energy, I have done work on the box of stuff. If I lift a ball, I have increased the gravitational potential energy of the ball. I've done work on the ball. If I pull back the elastic, I have stretched the elastic. I've increased the elastic potential energy of the elastic and ball system. Um, and then we also want to make some note, there can be energy that's due to an object's temperature or structure that we may not be capturing as readily here. And those are going to be internal energies. We're not going to get to the point where we have a good model for those in this class, but we do want to keep track of them. All right, now, what does it mean to do work? You may have some sense of this. You may have felt that you've done work in this class. Turns out that unless you've been exerting uh, force, on a, you know, force on a system in the direction of its motion, you have not been doing work in this class. So what this means, if I push an object, so if I push something to the right and it moves to the right, I do work on it. If something is moving to the left and I push it to the right, I also do work on it, but in another way. In that case, I'd be slowing it down. In the first case, it's speeding it up. So we need to be able to differentiate these. So specifically when we talk about work, it is going to be F D cos theta. F is going to be the force that we are applying which we're going to take to be constant in this case. It's usually going to be constant except for one example. D is the displacement. Don't ask me why it's suddenly not delta x. 
We just want to confuse you. Cos theta, we don't know what cosine is. That's going to be confusing. Well, let's leave that alone. Theta is just the angle measured between our force and the displacement. So let's say that I'm pulling a box, like so, by a rope. And this box, still the box here, it's being pulled by some force up at an angle theta relative to the direction it's moving in. Now, we might care about this in general, but we're really only going to care about three cases. And these three cases are going to be when theta is equal to zero. This is going to do positive work, and the work is going to be equal to the force times the displacement. If I'm going to care about the case where theta is 180 degrees, where the force is in the opposite direction as the displacement, and this is going to result in me doing negative work. And we're also going to care about the case where theta is 90 degrees, where the force is perpendicular to the displacement, where we do no work. So I'm just carrying a tray at constant velocity across a room. I exert an upwards force on the tray, but I move forwards and backwards. Since I'm moving forward, but exerting a force upward, I don't do work on the tray. I also don't change the energy of the tray. Useful to note. Now, one other thing that we want to think about energy, we're going to say is conserved. So what we mean by this, if we look at a system, we can ask what happens to the total energy of the system. All right, and the total energy of the system is going to be the kinetic energy plus the gravitational energy plus the elastic energy, which together we will often call um, the mechanical energy. Um, and then also the internal energy, which we're going to kind of sweep out of, under the rug more often than not, because again, we're not going to really develop a robust model for that yet. So now, I'm going to claim if the system is isolated, so if there's nothing around the system, then there's nothing it can interact with. And if it can't interact with anything, nothing can do work on it. Nothing can do work on it, nothing can change its energy. So if it's isolated, then the, the potential, the total energy, rather, U, should stay the same. Now, if something interacts with the system, though, if it's not isolated, then any change in the energy, the total energy, U, must be due to some work. So this is how we can kind of wrap this up. We're going to say that the total energy, or yeah, that the total energy changes by an amount known as the work. If there's no work, there's no change. This is our statement of conservation of energy. This is sometimes referred to as the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, if you're curious, the second law of thermodynamics says that entropy increases. The third law defines absolute zero, and the zeroth law, sneaky, um, says that two things are the same temperature if they're the same temperature, more or less. It actually says they're the same temperature if they don't exchange energy, but whatever. First law is our business right now. Energy is conserved. So one way of looking at this in kind of a long form is that the initial energy, which is, again, all of these initial states, plus the work is equal to the final energy. With one note, we've added a delta u in internal term, which is going to be u internal final minus u internal initial. So I just took the u internal initial term that was over here and kicked it to the other side of the equation. Because we really only interested, we're only interested in the internal energy if it changes. Um, like we're not going to usually care about the temperature of an object because every object is going to have some temperature. Um, but if it gets hotter, we're going to care about that. Every object has some configuration. That's great. We're not going to really write down a term for that unless it gets deformed, in which case some energy went into accomplishing that. Now, you might wonder, how are we going to turn this into a homework set? Good question. We're going to often use, we're going to talk about now kind of how to qualitatively represent data about energy. So we're not going to worry about specific values of it, but just it is energy present and how do we represent it. So this is kind of the procedure we're going to have. We're going to choose and describe the initial and final states of a system. We're going uh, initial states of our process rather. We're going to choose a system. That's going to dictate kind of what energy we have. We're going to represent energies in the initial state on a bar chart. We're going to represent energies in the final state on a bar chart. And then we're going to determine if work is done by external forces. So consider this thrilling case. A ball is dropped 
fantastic. So choose and describe the initial and final states. So the initial state, the ball is elevated. It is at rest. I don't see any springs or anything. Nothing seems to be on fire or deformed. So that's about as much as I need to worry about. The final state, the ball is lower. And based on those speed lines, it appears to be moving. So I want to also figure out here what kind of energies I should have. So because it's elevated, that means I'm going to be interested in gravitational potential. It's at rest. So since I talked about its movement, I should get kinetic in there. Pretty much everything is always going to have kinetic, either its absence or its presence. Ball is lower, so I'm still interested in its elevation. Now it's moving. Definitely interested in kinetic. I don't see anything with springs. I don't see anything with internal energies. Um, so I don't need any other type of energy to be tracked. My system, I'm going to say, let's see, what things are interacting? I have the ball, and I have the earth. All right. We can almost always say that we're going to put the earth in our system. So we can kind of take that as a default. We could put the earth outside. And if I put the earth outside, I don't have gravitational potential energy. Because if the earth isn't in my system, my system can't have gravitational energy. Unless I'm on a different planet or something. But again, stick, sticking around on earth. So for us, we're going to keep so that the, the, the earth, we're going to consider always in our system. Unless we explicitly put it outside. So now represent energies in the initial state in our bar chart. All right, so I'm going to make a bar chart over here. My initial, I got, you know, initial gravitational, initial kinetic. And so I'm going to say I'm going to start off with a lot of gravitational. It's going to make boxes to make it easy. Three boxes seems like a good amount. I'm not moving, so I've got nothing here, which I can make explicit if I put in some kind of zero. And then this is going to be my initial energy, right? I want a thing over here for work in case I need it. Now I'm going to say this is equal to my final energy. This is my whole first law of thermodynamics thing. In my final state, that's what I'm going to next, right? Represent energies in the final state. So here's three, here's four. I have again thought that I should have um, gravitational, final, kinetic, final. Now, it's at, as far as I can tell, this is as low as it goes, right? So I'm going to say this is my zero for gravitational. You know, when we measure heights, we get to measure heights arbitrarily. So I'm going to say I'm measuring it above right here. This is my zero height. So this is where gravitational potential is zero, which means I got a whole bunch of kinetic energy. Then the last thing we need to do is figure out if we need had work, if work happened in the middle. Well, I started with three boxes. I ended with three boxes, so no work had to be done. There might be variations. What if, what if air resistance was a thing? Well, air resistance, not in my system, what's it going to do? It's going to slow my object down. So maybe it still starts with three boxes here, but it only ends with two, which means I needed there to be one bar of negative work, which is kind of tricky to represent the way I set this up. So this is saying one box of energy left my system. Right? If we go back, negative work is energy leaving our system. So this is something taking energy out. Alternatively, maybe instead of thinking about it doing work, I'm going to say that this is going to cause, you know, friction is going to cause my ball to heat up. So I'm going to have some delta U internal. And I'm going to have one bar of internal energy. If 
Both of these are viable. Then let's take one last variation of this. What if I have the ball and the ball is caught? So now I'm going to focus on the ball. I'm going to take my hand. So I'm going to take, you know, the ball at rest and high. And then the ball is at rest and low. I'm going to take the ball to be my system, which means my hand is not in the system. So that's important. My initial state, still looking gravitational, kinetic, like so. I have my work that can happen. I have my final state where it's as low as it goes, but it's also not moving. So this is one of those situations where it's like, huh, huh. Something had to take energy away. Something had to do negative work. And so that is what I'm seeing here. My hand, so this is my hand doing negative work. It slowed the ball down. It took energy away from the system. Right now, this is all that we're going to worry about. We need to be able to look at a system and ask, you know, does it have gravitational energy because it's high up? Does it have kinetic energy because it's moving fast? Does it have, oof, way up here, elastic energy because it's stretched out? And then we want to be able to represent those energies. All right. Have fun.